last class, um, which was canonical forms of the equation. So where we use this is when we're designing logic circuits. It's very handy to be able to go directly from a truth table to logic. Um, and in particular, if we go to a logic equation, like the Boolean logic formulas we've been working with, then we can simplify it uh, and have a final circuit that's hopefully towards the simplest possible realization. Um, as I've showed, depending how you do the logic equations, you might end up with different um, results each time, depending sort of the order you apply things, which identities you apply. Um, so it's what we'll talk about later is sort of a way to guarantee a minimized function. Um, so to go from the truth table directly to a Boolean equation, we typically use what are called the min terms or max terms. Um, so the min terms is basically just if we have a, in the truth table, if we have, say, where there's a logic one, um, the min term is just the product of the input variables, that is the AND equation, that will result in a one. So for example, if we have this line where A is zero, B is one, C is one, the min term for this line would be the complement of A um, because it's zero, ANDed with B, ANDed with C. Um, so this min term for this particular line um, will only be one for that specific combination of input variables. You can imagine when A is zero, it'll be one, but if B is zero, this will be zero, and the whole thing zero. So it's only this line that it's equal to one. So how we can create a Boolean equation is we can just or all the min terms um, everywhere we need one. So for example, this line would be this min term, this line would be A ended with B complement, ended with C, A and B and C complement, A, B, and C. So each of those min terms will only be one for that specific line. If we OR them all together, the result is this exact truth table um, because we only get ones where we want them and nowhere else. The other way we can design it is what's using max terms. So in max terms, um, here with min terms, we're talking about the sum of products forms where we sort of OR all the min terms together. With max terms, we're talking about product of sum form um, where we AND all of the terms. So with max terms, uh, the difference is basically that when we write them out, we instead concentrate on the zeros because the idea here is that this is the form of the equation. Each of the max terms will be anded together. And we're going to insert zeros in one of these max terms, which will make the whole thing equal to zero um, for only the specific spots we require it. So in this example, all of these are one, so we do nothing um, because each of these max terms will be zero only for a specific case. So this term, for example, it's only possible at zero if each of the inputs is zero, zero, zero. Everywhere else, it's going to be one. Um, so when we write these out, when we and them together like this, the result is that the function, again, gives us what we want, and we achieve that by engineering where we want the zeros. Um, so once we have a product of sums or some product forms, we can basically use all of the same Boolean algebra we've been using up until now and reduce it down. Um, so whichever one you use, here I've shown the same truth table and sum of products and product of sum form, the result should always be uh, the same logic realization. So that's what I've shown here, for example. We have B and C ORed with A, um, and here we have A or with B and C. So when we ask for the canonical form of it, this is the original um, canonical form. This is the form that basically exactly follows the rules request. So 
that's the original product of some form, and then we can reduce it down into some simplified form. Again, the simplified form might be different depending on where you stop to some degree, if you only, for example, get to here and don't notice you can simplify it further, or if you apply rules in different orders. Um, whereas these two, the product of sum and sum of product, in the canonical form, should always be the same, um, no matter who does it. Admittedly, the order, you know, you write it down could be different, but all of the terms should be exactly the same, because each term corresponds directly to a one or a zero in the truth table. Um, so any two truth tables that have the same output for the same input, uh, that is to say they are the same, will have the same sum of products form or the same product of sum form. Um, so the canonical forms let us more directly compare truth tables without needing to kind of figure out where people differed. Um, when we write them down, we'll often use this simplified notation. Um, so the sum of products form, which is the first one we talked about, we'll use um, the summation notation. And this, for example, is saying min term three, four, five, six, seven. What this means is that in the truth table, this is the location of the ones where we have min terms three, four, five, six, seven. So back in the truth table, you can see um, min term three, four, five, six, seven. And again, if you want to think about it, you can simply say this is um, 3 in binary is 0, 1, 1, 4 in binary is 1, 0, 0, et cetera. So if you're told, for example, that min terms 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 are in this particular function, you can interpret that as saying if I want the truth table, um, it's zeros for everything min term 0, min term 1, um, min term 2, and assuming I just had A, B, well, I guess we'll go all the way. Um, 0, 1, 0. So these are all zeros for the outputs. Um, and then min term 3, oops, min term 3 is 1, min term 4 is 1, min term 5 is 1, um, min term 6 is 1, in term seven is one. So the those forms in the truth table are basically another way of representing the exact same information. Um, so you can go from the truth table to that sum of products notation. The products of sum notation is the same idea except yeah. yeah a different question. So the output is, it depends on the question, right? I mean it's not always that no, so that's just one example I've given. So if, for example, the truth table, um, like if there was a one here, yeah, so in that case, this would have a two here. So, um, or for example, if I had, and you can have any number of input variables, so I could just have a, b, um, sum of midterm, you know, and, and if I just had three, um, that would mean that the only spot there's one is one one because um, everywhere else there's a zero. So this is basically an AND gate. Um, so this this notation you can think of as just a way of marking where the ones are in the truth table. The product of some forms, we just mark where the zeros are. Um, so again, here I have 0, 1, 2. Uh, and this is where the zeros are in the truth table. So again, you can just directly write um, for the first three spots, there's a zero. And using the previous, uh, this example here, in product of some form, it would just look like, again, we use capital M for max term. Um, and that's just telling you that the first three locations have zero in them.
Oops, sorry. Obviously, that's one. Um, so the first three locations of zero, those that aren't specified, have a one. Um, so it's all the same way of representing, or different way of representing the same information. Um, these forms will often be called uh, two-level combinational logic. So the canonical forms are should, in the original canonical form, should be a two-level combinational logic. Assuming if you have complements of the input available, so this is to say I have A, B, B complement, C, C complement, D, D complement, all available to me. Um, so when we say two-level logic, what we mean is that there's basically two levels between the input and the output. So there's level one and level two. Um, and when you look at the forms, you can sort of directly see that because, for example, in the in both forms, in the product of sum and sum of products, in product of sums, what we have is there's a three input and gate, um, and it's fed each of these terms is a three input or gate. Um, so again, there's only two levels between the input and output. It might be large gates, as in there's multiple inputs, um, but it is still just two level. So it cannot be more than two level? Not in the original form. So the original canonical forms, when you write them, will just be two levels. When you simplify it, you might do other stuff. You might have you know, several levels. Um, so if it's asking for a two-level form, what it's telling you is that when you're simplifying it, you basically, you may be able to make it simpler, but you can't have more than two levels. So you can't, for example, um, have something like that. So if I pull this out, then there's a level three here at the output. Um, so this would be three level combinational logic. So if you, when you simplify it, for example, if I had this and then you were using this term again somewhere within it. Um, for the most part, when you draw the schematic, it should be fairly obvious if it's two level or not. So if you want more, um, you can see again the textbooks we're using, the chapter references, as well as the class notes. Um, this goes through some of these examples plus some additional examples here. Um, so I'll take a quick break. People want to do anything?